What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. James Haskell, along with my co host, Glenn Martin. And we are here tonight to talk about a source subject, a subject that we are not too excited to talk about, but we're here to talk about nonetheless. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about our guy, Deshaun Elliott, the Joker, uh, and, and his recent injury and how the Ravens move forward from that. But before we get into it, we're here for all your Ravens news, good, bad, ugly. Uh, so make sure if you're new to the channel, you hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications, and leave all your comments below. Give us a like if you enjoy the show. Uh, but Glenn, we got to get right into this. Uh, and, and I feel a little nostalgia tonight because I was just thinking about the fact that I'm wearing this, this baby blue button down shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Powder blue. This is the shirt I wore when we did our like third ever video on YouTube. Yeah. You're, I was still, out, you're still fitting in it. I thought it'd be I too fit big it now. better. I'm about 30 pounds yeah. lighter than I was back well, then. I thought it'd be a little big for you. No, no. Yeah. No, it was too small for me back then. I was choking in it, you know? But uh, no, it, it's been one heck of a ride. But uh, nonetheless, Deshaun Elliott is here. is uh, is unfortunately uh, been severely injured. So let's get right into it, Glenn. What what was the news? Yeah, not just not only did did um, Deshaun Elliott suffer a torn bicep, but also a torn pectoral. Yeah. So I mean, first of all, how about the toughness? And you know, like I mean. It, it, it and what's what's a shame is about when he got hurt, Jimmy. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was on the play where the fullback, I believe it was on the play where the fullback laid out, made a fantastic catch, thought he wasn't touched, and so he got up and ran an additional 15 yards. And on yeah. that tackle is when the injury occurred. Um, so it, it what's really disappointing is that it was it was kind of an unnecessary uh, action, and and he got he got injured on a tackle that should have never taken place because if the refs uh, had seen that he was touched on his way down on that diving catch, then the tackle would have never been necessary down the field and this injury, you know, would not have occurred. So in that regard, although I'm not saying that, you know, I understand why the why the referees missed it. It was kind of a, a grazing touch as the guy was going to the ground and there was a lot going on. So I understand it, but disappointed nonetheless, the fact that it was an unnecessary tackle that caused the injury that, that is make him lose the rest of his season. Yeah, really unfortunate. I, I understand what you're saying completely. And uh, I really, I really feel bad for this guy because he's battled injuries. Um, you know, this year obviously had the quad, but if you look past, if you look at back at his career, he's done nothing but battle injuries. But when he's been on the field, he's been effective, explosive, physical, everything yeah. that you really want him to be. He was just getting his hands on the ball more. It seemed like a little bit this year and, and improving his ball skills, at least making an impact that way. So really unfortunate. Uh, and yeah, I do believe it was also on that play. But we wish him nothing but the best. He sent out, he sent out a tweet uh, uh, yesterday, and and uh, I, th I think it was yesterday. And, you know, like I said, we wish Deshaun Elliott nothing but the best, and we know he'll come back from this. But I got a question before we talk about whether or not you know, or how the Ravens move on this season. This is a contract year for for the Joker. Yeah, is this the last we've sh we've seen a thirty two in in a Baltimore Ravens uniform? I, well, I'll say this: I think you know. Unfortunately, I think honestly his his chances of coming back are probably have probably gone up since the injury. In that, if he hmm. would have played so well, I think he may have played himself out of Baltimore, and and he would have you know the Ravens would have been outbid by by another team for his services. I think the injury. While it certainly affects his pockets, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna change the contract that he's gonna get. He's gonna get a contract from someone, whether it's here or elsewhere. But there's no doubt that the amount is 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 affected. I mean, he's missed his three of his four years in the league. He's missed the entire season with an injury or a big chunk of the season, I guess, if you include this year, because he did play in what's that five games, five or six games this year. He did miss mm -hmm. weeks four and five, I believe, earlier um, with a with a different injury, but. I think his chances of coming back might have been increased by the injury. Uh, unfortunately, it's because his contract value is likely decreased, and that's why the Ravens might be able to squeeze him under the cap uh, next year. But 
it's just disappointing for him because it's it's no doubt it's going to affect his paycheck. Last year, he was able to play an entire season, really kind of showed the league that, hey, look, I can be a guy that you can count on, I can be healthy, um, and I can be a consistent contributor. But And this year, he was trying to kind of you know double down on that and show people, look, this wasn't a one-time thing last year. I'm a guy you can count on. And then mm, the unfortunate injury bug bites him again, and he's gone again. So disappointing for him, but it may have just improved the odds of him coming back next year. That's interesting. You know, I didn't think about that. I thought this is what I think will happen. I'm actually on the opposite end of the spectrum. And this kind of bleeds into what we'll talk about next is how the Ravens are going to compensate for the loss of him in the near term. And I think that will end up being the long-term solution, which will impede him from coming coming back. Mm -hmm. And I think that that will simply be uh, with Brandon Stevens. I think Brandon Stevens has shown out and, and, and there, you know, there's definitely been some growing pain, some, some bumps along the way, some up and downs, and there will, certainly continue uh to be those same growing pains and 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 learning curves whatever phrase you want to put on it but but he's new to the position he's new to defense he's new to the nfl has a lot of news he's a new 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 right mm-hmm. and so with that being said he's played well considering all of those things so i think they're gonna plug him in and and i think um i think once they plug him in <laughs> DK just texted us. I didn't text him. You can text him if you want. I'll text him. I'll uh, text him. All right. So, but once they plug Brandon Stevens in and he gets through that curve, uh, then I think they will ride with him in the following year. So what I'm trying to say is I think I'm on the opposite end of you. I, I understand your point in that it will definitely lower his price uh, and possibly make him, uh, you know, open up for the ability to come back. But I think he wants to be a starter. I think Brandon Stevens will be the starter going into next year along with Chuck Clark. And I think that's the way that the Ravens actually had it in mind, right? Like that was their plan. I don't think they were planning on paying Deshaun Elliott anyway. Uh, And I think that even though he's going to make less money, he's going to want to start next year. Um, So do you also see Brandon Stevens this year? I mean, is he in the driver's seat at this point? Yeah, right now it's his job to lose. It it showed when, when he was out, when Deshaun was out weeks four and five, um, it was it was just it was um Brandon Stevens we saw out there. He played a hundred percent of the defensive snaps in week five and seventy four percent of the of the snaps defensively um in week five in week four. So he's the guy. And not only that, he he also contributed in both of those games on special teams as well. So this is a guy who's gonna be really busy going forward. Thank goodness the Ravens decided to to come out of camp with a bunch of safeties on this team. I mean, they got depth there. They got Geno Stone still available. They got our Darius Washington. Of course, uh, Levine is still in town. And 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 although he's not really uh, – he's certainly not a, a, a guy you really want to see on the field a ton as a safety, uh, maybe as a linebacker and, and stuff like that in the dime, but not as a right. safety. But the good thing is they do have depth there. They do have some young depth there. Um, and look, but get used to some growing pains, ladies and gentlemen, we love these guys, but they are going to have moments where they have mental lapses, where they take poor angles at the, you know, at the ball carrier, there's going to be some times where you're going to be scratching your head and shaking your head at Brandon Stevens, but just understand he's not just a young football player in that he's a rookie. He's also a very young player on the defensive side of the ball after just transitioning to defense in his final year at college. Yeah, absolutely. It's really going to be interesting to see. You know, I think one good thing for him is that Chuck Clark to him, you know, so let me say this. Josh Bynes has done to Patrick Queen what I'm hoping that Chuck Clark will do for Brandon Stevens in being that veteran presence back there that he can lean on to allow him to just be instinctive, uh, physical, you know, because he's got physical gifts. He's he's relatively instinctual. Um, but you know, to help him come along from a mental standpoint, to trust his eyes, know what he's seeing, things of that nature. So that's going to be really interesting, but I agree with you, Glenn. I'm going to see how the Raven. I'm interested to see how the Ravens mitigate the impact of those growing pains. That's really what it's about. It's not about, well, let's make them impossible. Let's make them so they don't happen. That That's a futile task, right? It's just yeah. not going to happen. But if we can mitigate the impact of those situations, um, I think that, that that can be a big help. So last question here. Uh, that I'd like to know, and I'll give you my answer and then and then kick it to you. Concern level, right? Like mm-hmm. our team has been decimated by injuries, absolutely decimated. And I said at the end of the, our post-game reaction, I'm done saying, well, we've been injured and, you know, we're so injured in this end of the year. I'm so like numb to it at this point. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? To where I'm like, you know what? We're riding or dying with who we got. If Glenn and I got to strap up, look, we'll give it a good two plays. Yeah, I was gonna say you, know? you get you get maybe two out of me. Maybe. <laughs> Depends how that first one goes. Yeah. <laughs> but but my my point is that uh I, I so my question is this how how concerned are you from a from a defensive standpoint in that we're already not a great defense? Like let's be honest, we're yep. going into week, you know, eight games. So my answer is this. I'm the the hope the the, the dying optimist. I am not crazy concerned about this loss. Uh, okay. The reason I'm not crazy concerned about uh, this loss is because I think that Chuck Clark will help significantly. Uh, and it, that just means Chuck's going to have to do more, but I also think they will be able to scheme something up uh, to help protect Brandon Williams as much as possible. Brandon so, Stevens, I got you. Or sorry, Brandon Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brandon Williams would be a part of that protecting him. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon Williams doesn't need protection from anyone. I mean, no, just look he at the used guy. To be a bouncer. He, oh, I bet he does. I bet he did. You know, he also I used mean, to clean uh, porter potties. Did he just pick them up and turn them upside down and shake them no, until like all the, the duty holes. fell out? You know, like the oh, okay. I just figured he was so powerful. Yeah. Um, but so as far as my concern level, the thing I look back at is I looked at weeks four and five when Deshaun Elliott was forced to miss those weeks and seen kind of how the performance was in those weeks. And it, and unfortunately, it was an up and down because they had a, a, a great, fantastic game against the Denver Broncos, held them to just seven points, um, and and really dominated that game. That was one of the, the, the more relaxing games of the season for any Ravens fan. Uh, but then they, they came back on, behind that game and had their worst defensive performance, at least when it comes to total yards surrendered. They gave up. Uh, 25 points to the Indianapolis Colts and and 523 uh, yards of uh, I'm sorry 513 yards of offense surrendered. So that was their poorest game defensively after a pretty darn good game defensively against the Broncos. So really up and down. The thing that mm -hmm. worries me is that while we haven't seen a ton of it, we've only seen a flash, and it was. Uh, in the Chargers game where, where Deshaun Elliott got the interception on a great play defending uh, Cook, the, the tight end. We haven't seen a lot of it, but Deshaun Elliott has ball skills. He showed it off a ton in college. I mean, he had like six interceptions yeah. in his final year at Texas. Um, so I'm, I'm a little concerned about like, where's the playmaking coming in the back end? Because while we love Chuck Clark, we think he's a very sure tackler. He's obviously a very smart player. A guy gets... Uh, gets a lot done. He's a consistent player, but we we don't really think he has a ton of ball skills. So now, does Brandon Stevens have those ball skills to help on the back end, or are we looking at guys like, well, they got to get in the right position. They got to they got to make sure nobody gets behind them because we're not going to get those flashy plays, but we need those solid plays from those guys. So that it's hard to gleam a lot from from you know their past performance because they had one really good one and one really poor one when he was out. So, it, it, unfortunately, Jimmy, I think it's going to be a wait-and-see process here. Now, my other question to you, I'll kick back to you, is All right. is with him I'll out. Knock your mic how, over. How quick, yeah, how quick is the – how how um, tight is the leash going to be on Brandon Stevens? Mm. Like, are we going to see a quick pull if he gives up a big play, if he has a mental error? Are we going to see our Darius Washington finally up and active for these games instead of being the healthy scratch we've seen oftentimes this year? Yeah, I don't think the leash will be too short. I think it'll be like, you know, just for the sake of the comparison, you know, the ones that people use where they, they're like 30 yards, they're like the training ones and, and you know, their dog doesn't even feel like it's on a leash at all at that point. Right. Yeah. Where I'm like walking around the park and my dog's leash, I'm like holding it, you know, <laughs> holding it right next to me. Not going to be that by any stretch of the imagination. And I think the reason is, is because I think with a young guy, you have to can be considerate of his psyche. If he's too scared to make a mistake and be pulled, I don't think you're going to be able to get the most out of him because he's not an established vet where, look, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, or any other guy, doesn't have to be Hall of Famers, you know what I mean? But an established vet, he knows he makes a mistake. He's not looking at the sideline like, hey, is young boy coming in? No, yeah. he's not. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I think that he will be given leeway uh, mm -hmm. is, is what I'm trying to say, to help massage his psyche and make sure that he's feeling confident that we believe in him, that we know he has the skills to get it done. What do you, I mean, what do you think? Do you think they'll pull the trigger I pretty quickly? I tend to agree with you. It's just, it's got, it's such a tough balance as a coach. Like when do you, you know, say enough is enough. And when do you allow the growing pains to hopefully, you know, work you, themselves out? You know it's when a, you do it? 
I think this is the difference. Um, being having a mistake is one thing, but noticing that he is completely overwhelmed, where he's giving everything he can, but he's just swimming in too deep a water. Yeah. At, to me, that's just. But I think they're two different things, and I think John Harbaugh can distinguish those things. Where he's giving it all he's got, and you know the current's just too strong, right? Like right. he's going backwards. But I think that's different than just making mental error after mental error after mental error. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. If the offense comes out and shows some him something that the coach can realize, right. look, he's never seen that before. That's right. something unique to him. But if on the other side, if he blows a basic coverage in a, in a spot where he's expected to understand what his job is, yeah. then maybe it's a different call. So unfortunately, as fans, we may not be able to see that in real time. We we're right. gonna have to you know rely on the coaches. That's why they're there. Is is to make those kinds of decisions, those kinds of calls. And that's um, what you guys got us for, because we'll let you know what's going on. That's it, absolutely. And hopefully, um, you know, for the sake of the Ravens, we don't see him get pulled yeah. for our Darius Washington, Geno Stone, uh, whichever they decide is the, is the you know, the guy who's in the rightful spot to, to take over there. But I'm hopeful that Brandon Stevens does enough to where we see him the entire game, because that means he's playing well and he's progressing and getting better, because I think you're right. He is the guy. I mean, he's a third round pick. He's a guy that they wanted to eventually take over this job. Yep. No doubt about it. Um, and so, hey, look, might just have to be now and not next year like they, I'm sure, you know, had in their plan. So let us know what you guys think. Um, are you, you know, totally concerned? Are you really worried about, wow, this defense already struggled at times. Now they're losing Deshaun, um, who's one of their better playmakers on the year. Like, are, are you, what's your concern level right now? Um, and we'll uh, look forward to hearing from you, and we'll talk soon.